and you learn to grow your food and you learn how to fish. You learn how to climb the coconut trees. That would be cool. That would be cool, right? I can climb a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. You're ready to sign up and go to Pagan? <laughs> Found it? There you go. <laughs> Who's been in DC? Thanks, Santa. Half a day. Half a, Half a day. day. My name is Sinta. What is your name? Ina Anhusi Inina. Oh. And I'm Cecilia. Have you ever heard of the island called Pagan? Yes. And what can you tell me about Pagan? It is in the northern Marianas. We're not on top, but above Saipan. It's about 200 miles from Saipan. So you go from Guam to Rota to Tinian to Saipan, then you start going north to like Ferlanda, Mendoza, and you uh, Anatahan, Saliguan, Alamagan. Then you get to Pagan. I remember seeing um, the ocean and the, the volcano. Because you know what you can find up there? When you wake up, you're all tired, but you look out at the ocean and you see this beautiful dolphin swimming. You just want to run into the water and swim with them. You'd like to try that? Mm -hmm. I know that it's very beautiful and there's a lake. There's a really deep lake. The beauty of that place is it's so real that we do not want anything or anybody to come and just destroy the place. Many years ago, people lived on Sariguan, people lived on Alamagan, Pagan, Agrigan, and Asuncion. Anatahan. Yes, and Anatahan, which is closer to Saipan. Today, those islands have very few people living there, mainly the three islands further north, called Alamagan, Pagan, and Agrigan. The volcano erupted in 1981. Right? So the people who used to live there had to move to Saipan, where they have been living, but they want to return home. Pagan is a place where I was born. We left when I was only two years old. Oh. I went back when I turned 43 years old. And I get to see the island for the very first time through an eye of an adult. Now almost everything there is changing. It's, it's coming back to life. Do you know why Pagan Island is in danger today? I think it's because the U.S. want to use Pagan Island as bombing practice grounds. How do you know it's in danger? Uh, because my mom told me. She said um, they're tr the military are trying to use it for to test um, bombs. Today, the biggest threat to the resettlement of Pagan and the rest of the Northern Islands is the military's plans to bomb Pagan. What they want to do is drop thousand pound bombs from the air. They plan these uh, ship to shore bombardments where they're going to be shooting onto land from the sea. They are planning to conduct sonar testing in our waters. Have you ever heard what happens when marine mammals are exposed to sonar testing? No, but I'm pretty sure that it's not good for them. No, it's not, because it causes their ears and brains to bleed. Pretty soon they're going to be beaching themselves on, on, on the sand. That's why you see a lot of them dead, because it's, the sonar testing is really bad for them. What do you suppose will happen to the environment with them dropping bombs and firing cannons on land? What do you suppose will happen to that beautiful island? You won't be able to live on it again because mm -hmm. the volcano was already like, it, that was strong, but the military dropping bombs and everything could be even stronger. It's gonna affect everything, basically the whole entire land mm -hmm. because you have things that are not supposed to be there where it's supposed to be thriving and that's just gonna ruin it all. How do you think you'd feel if you were somewhere temporarily and you wanted to return home but were not able to? How would that make you feel? It would make me feel sad. 
Because my home is my home, and that's where I grew up, and that's where I'd want to be. What do you think about the plants of Pagan Island? I don't think they should do that. Why not? Because it's their home, mm -hmm. and, and they just want to bomb it up and kill the fish. They shouldn't do that. Would they want people bombing their, their places where they grew up? No, so we should, we should tell them that. And they shouldn't be doing that to where we live. I'm pretty sure when they take the land, they are gonna do something with it, but most likely for something that, like, they don't wanna do to their place. They're planning on taking someone else's land so that they don't have to ruin their land. What do you say to people who say, but our soldiers need to be trained and they need somewhere to train, so they may as well train on Pagan. What do you say to those people? Why would we train with things like guns and harmful weapons when we could be working toward much better things like cleaning up our islands, promoting more cultural values? It's important because our culture and our land are both connected. Because, because mm -hmm. on Guam, the, one of one of the part of our cultures is we go fishing, and that includes the ocean. And then we go and we can build our houses that include our trees. So that's a very big part of our culture. Mm -hmm. That so, is very true. And, and in the Northern Islands, we're far away from everything, right? That we need to depend on the water, and we need to depend on on the land in order for us to survive. So you are right when you say that, that land and ocean, they are connected to us by our culture and by our traditions. I'm learning to sail. I've been sailing. I'm learning to use the stars. I believe that will help also as part of our transportation to go home. So Bogan is home for us and we want to go back. So we're going to need you to help us start learning to sail also so that when you do become an adult, then you can be part of that journey to start bringing people back home. So what do you think is the best way to communicate our desire to save the island? What can we do? Telling everyone that this island is meant for something else instead of just like leaving it in the rubble. People don't truly understand until they picture what it's going to be like for them. Yes. They don't You're understand until so they know what it feels like. So yes. we need to explain what's going to happen to all of us after what affects us, you know. Mm -hmm. We can make it because there should be some, we should have a big government between all the Marianas and everyone from each island could be at that government and we could speak to them as one instead of all these little voices. If we unite so that our voices grow and become stronger, do you think that we can roar loud enough so that the world will hear our message? Yeah. You think so? Well, if we all get together and we all do it, but if it's just one or two people, then it might not work. But if it's everyone, then it should work. And how do we start motivating people to join the cause? Because I think what you're saying is very important. One person can pass it to another person, and then that person can pass it to another person, and then it could get around to everybody. Thank you very much for sharing. I really love spending the time with you and hearing your brilliant answers, so thank you for being here with me and my sister Cecilia. I walked in here not knowing anything about Bogan, so this was amazing being able to talk to you guys. Awesome, that's great well, talking to you. Well, you could have fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded to me like, you know, an awful lot. You gave excellent, smart answers, and I'm very impressed. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you for talking to me about Bogan. It's You're our welcome. pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, coming <laughs> on the show with us and for inviting us. 
when you're going to run for <laughs> office. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. For more content like this, subscribe to Nihi Kids on YouTube.